Thanks, Tim Bani. Um, good day, everyone. It's uh, nice and sunny here in uh, Prince Edward Island, but we have snow on the ground, so hopefully most of you are seeing things growing. Um, you were probably many of you were expecting Melissa Anes, um to do the presentation. Melissa got called away at the last minute, um, so I've uh, stepped in. Uh, Melissa is uh, our wonderful project and community manager, and she's the. If you do follow the Island Door project, uh, you most likely hear from Melissa uh, on a regular basis. She's our tweeter and blogger and manager of our our various committees and uh, and the larger community. So um, uh, a big hi to all of you from Melissa. Uh, Island Dora is uh, generally we refer to it as a digital asset management system. Uh, Island Dora is not uh, restricted to any particular type of digital content. Uh, we have uh, institutions that are using it for a wide variety of applications, uh, traditional institutional repositories uh, that it provides functionality like that of DSpace or ePrints. Uh, they're also using it for digital library collections, uh, whether they're digital books, video, video uh, PDFs, kinds of content, and, and increasingly it's uh, in uh, the research context to store Search data um, of any type. Islandora is, I guess, Islandora, the name from the, we would consider to be the core uh, philosophical and uh, practical backbone of Islandora, and that's the Fedora Commons system. Fedora Commons is a best practice repository system. It's been around for going on 15 years. Um, Fedora was often considered uh, the best practice for digital preservation, but it was to some degree hampered by, uh, by its complexity. Uh, uh, so what Islandora did was it took the Drupal web content management system and grafted it on, on top of Fedora. Uh, um, often refer to Islandora as an ecosystem, a software ecosystem, because it's extremely flexible. Uh, here, here at the University of PEI, we probably have integrated in, uh, I would say, dozens of open source software that perform very various functions within that Islandora framework. Uh, so Islandora is meant to be uh, extensive uh, and flexible. Uh, it is open source. Um, the cartoon here, kind of for those that follow the open source community, it's uh, a bit of a, a play on I guess the the basic concept that open source is in itself a, a, a varied and flexible uh, concept. Uh, not all open source software is uh, the same or or built in the same way. Um, open source, the open source community can have a very um, strong uh, approach or uh, beliefs or her um, approaches to the way things are done, um, but it's um, it's a very functional environment, uh, and at the University of PEI, uh, all of our software, with one exception, is open source. Um, so the Islandora system is our contribution to that broader open source community uh, for organizations that uh, need to steward digital assets uh, into the future. It is licensed, like Drupal, with the GNU uh, General Public License. Uh, so it has that type of open source license, which means that when you change Islandora, the changes that you make, um, if distributed, become the property, in a sense, of the larger community. Um, so it's one of the more open um, open source licenses. 
and we did that deliberately partly because Drupal has that same license but also because we felt it was important uh, for the people in the community who changed Island Door to give back uh, to that community. So Drupal provides the front-end uh, interface, um, Fedora that back-end preservation service, uh, Islandora has a very robust and varied feature set, and I'll talk about some of those things coming up. We have a very strong community presence, increasingly members outside of the Islandora Foundation or the University of PEI are contributing to the code. Uh, we produce virtual machines to make it easier for institutions to get up and running. Uh, Islandora is a very rich ecosystem, so that translates into software complexity. So it can be difficult to, to install, but we do make every best effort to, um, to ease that installation burden and make it easier for institutions to adopt it. We also have regular camps. Uh, we have usually around six camps a year. Uh, Island are three days in length typically, and we try to cap them at 40 participants so that everybody gets a, a good hands-on experience. Um, if you feel that there would be an interest in your uh, country or your part of the world in uh, having experienced Islandora users and developers come and, and do a three-day training session, then we're always happy to, to hear from you. The foundation is a nonprofit organization and our camps are run on a cost recovery basis. Um, so if you do have an interest in your local or regional community then uh, certainly be to hear from you. Um, so as I mentioned Drupal is the front end. It is the I suspect many of you are familiar with Drupal. It's a system for easily creating uh, diverse web websites. Drupal also supports uh, close to 200 languages. Um, it allows you to create a single website that supports multiple languages. Uh, so it's extremely uh, robust in the international context. Um, if there are no, if the language your uh, that you use is not represented in Drupal, then it actually makes it easy to add other languages. So the support for internationalization. Um, access, all of those things are very well represented in the Drupal interface. Fedora in the bottom block of this diagram represents that repository layer. So uh, sometimes people don't quite understand why we don't um, use Drupal to its full capacity. Uh, we're actually changing that with the new release. We have a, a module in Islandora called Sync which synchronizes the, all of your metadata into standard Drupal nodes or entities. So it allows you to use 100% of that Drupal uh, goodness and capacity. But we are very uh, committed and passionate about fully leveraging the Fedora repository layer. So if uh, your organization decides that it needs to move away from Drupal, or even Fedora in the future. The architecture of Islandora is such that it is one of our primary focuses is long-term sustainability. So if our, our goal is to make it easier from a preservation standpoint to migrate digital assets, that's the binary objects and the metadata from system to system uh, over time. So that's certainly a core philosophical feature of the framework. Um, Islandora was actually developed uh, at the University of PEI. Um, Melissa put this slide in here. The, uh, those are toy potato heads, which I collect. So if you ever come to Prince Edward Island, you can tell which office is mine from all the potato heads in the window. Um, the, my experience in, in almost 30 years of uh, university working as a systems librarian or a university librarian is not so good on the commercial side. I had had experiences where I purchased a license 
do an expensive piece of software only to have the company go out of business two months later. Um, so I increasingly was was hesitant to take what I call the crown jewels of the institution, those digital assets that we are creating and stewarding for the future. I was increasingly hesitant to put those into a commercial context or a context where I didn't have control over the software's uh, future. So I, Islandora was my first project um, and I started the project to seven years ago with the discrete focus of ensuring a sustainable uh, ecosystem around the software uh, so that uh, even if the founder or the the people who created the software uh, changed or went elsewhere that the software would continue to have a diverse support community around it. I also feel very strongly that open source is an important whether you're in a traditional commercial enterprise context, a nonprofit organization, a small library, public library, an academic institution, I think open source is a very important way to uh, A, get top quality software, um, be free from restrictions, and also have the flexibility of a large community that it makes improvements and makes software better. Um, so this slide uh, is a link to a 2013 survey of open source adopters and vendors and it was the first time in the eight or nine years of this survey that better quality software was the number one reason for people adopting open source software. So I think that traditional concept of open source being inferior to commercial software is no longer the case. I would argue that it hasn't been the case for, for a long time. Um, so we're very committed to producing a, a quality product and um, benefiting our, our community through open source. So it was started, as I mentioned, um, it's uh, going on seven years ago. The three logos here, I call this the three logos slide because it represents an evolution of the software project. Um, in a graphical sense. Um, the first logo was created on a plane uh, as I was going to the first conference to present on Islandora. And the third logo is one that Melissa uh, designed when she started as our community manager. So I think that speaks to the stability, um, the length of time that the software has been out there, uh, and um, that diversity uh, represents in terms of uh, what we do. Um, this slide is a representation of what I call the research data life cycle or the data life cycle and it's drawn on from uh, similar diagrams from a fellow named Chuck Humphrey who's at the University of Alberta. Chuck is very prominent in the international uh, data circles um, and this formed a very important part of the genesis of Islandora and essentially what it says is it doesn't matter what kind of organization you are or where you are on the information life cycle, whether you're just starting creation of data, you're producing a journal article or you're popularizing the information from, for example, a, a research uh, project, Islandora is able to and designed to store information at all stages in that life cycle. Islandora, we often talk about solution packs. Solution packs are basically um, off-the-shelf, pre-installed packages of functionality that are um, focused around particular often types of data. So we have standard image, large image. Large image are TIFFs or JPEG 2000s, uh, where your image can be uh, potentially gigabytes large and you're able to zoom in and out of these extremely large images um, as though they're small JPEGs. Audio video book which is essentially a paged large image solution which allows you to uh, digitize books say as TIFFs, OCR the content make them full text searchable. Newspaper is similar to book but designed for serialized paged content, PDF, 
The Scholar IR allows you to store scholarly articles and metadata. Uh, increasingly uh, functional uh, part of the Island Ore ecosystem. The first public release of the Scholar module is uh, at the end of this month. Um, and then there's also the, the WARC for web archiving. So typically a solution pack contains sample data, sample metadata uh, forms. Uh, Islandora can uh, create a form to edit any type of metadata. There are really no restrictions on the metadata schema. It can be a standard schema like mods or Dublin Core, or it can be an arbitrary schema that's been created internally by an organization. So solution packs are a primary means of delivery. Form Builder is the way we build those forms. And essentially, the Form Builder takes any XML uh, form document and translates it into a Drupal form. So it makes it easy to create very complex forms. Uh, to date, uh, I believe there are 20 to 30 different metadata schemas supported in Islandora. They range from Dublin Core and Mods to EAC, uh, MADS for Scholar Metadata, uh, Darwin Core for Biological, uh, EML, Ecological Modeling Language, ChemML for Chemistry, um, quite, a, quite a robust range. We recently had one of our colleagues built a, mo um, a form in Islandora for modifying METs wrapper uh, records, um, which is uh, a nice development to see in this part. Uh, Islandora exposes the functionality in Fedora and the helper applications through various administrative functions. So for a lot of the functionality, you can simply go to an administrative form and check, tick off a checkbox or um, indicate um, of a helper module like FFmpeg. Uh, so a great deal of administrative functionality. Preservation services. Uh, Island supports the Bagot uh, 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 standard. Uh, checksums, you can run through an entire repository and generate checksums after the data is ingested. Um, so you can do a retrospective. We have support for premise for describing the preservation metadata associated with that. The Islandora Foundation has recently enabled uh, interest groups for people within the Islandora community or external to get together and talk about specific topics of interest. And the first one, which was just formed this month, is the preservation interest group. Uh, lots of tools in Islandora. Um, when you implement the IR or Scholar module, you can do batch imports from RIS, EndNote, uh, a series of PubMed or DOI numbers. You can do a mass import using the OAI Harvester tool. Uh, integration interact for OCR. Uh, the ability to ingest and view MARC uh, records, support for various viewers, open archives, um, lots, lots of functionality that um, uh, the Islandora camps can be three days as the system is very, very rich and people do a lot of things with it. Uh, Islandora Sync, I've mentioned, Islandora Scholar also. Uh, Islandora I would um, suggest is probably the most feature-rich IR. It supports very robust standards like citation, um, the citation standard that Zotero uses, various importers, integration with Sherpa Romeo, uh, lots of great functionality uh, for uh, Scholar. Uh, the upcoming release is called .x. Uh, 1.3, so that is the most recent release. Uh, we anticipate that it will be available in final version in, on April 24th. Uh, the, this current release, or the upcoming release, is the first time we've actually had a complete uh, of volunteer release managers. Uh, for example, Nick Rue out of York University in Toronto is our release manager. 
manager, and we have various individuals who have stepped up uh, to provide component management and testing and documentation enhancement. So it's a great example of what uh, people can do when good, strong, open source software is available to them. Um, it's almost a natural, I think, um, tendency to want to step up and provide uh, resources um, to make that software uh, strong and robust. Lots of new functionality in the new release. Um, we also are introducing our one-click install using a system called Chef. Um, so you can download a virtual machine. That's often what we recommend to people to learn how the system works because you can run it on your local computer or laptop. Um, you can also run it in our sandbox, sandbox.islandora.ca. You can log in and immediately start uh, working as an administrator and understand how the system works. Or you can download the Chef install and with one click uh, it's installed in your local uh, Linux computer uh, and is a completely production ready system. Uh, we are planning, uh, for those of you that follow the Fedora efforts, the Fedora 4 is the upcoming release of Fedora. Um, I sit on the Fedora 4 steering committee with a number of colleagues and Islandora is committed to supporting Fedora 4. Our approach at this time is to take the upcoming as yet final release of Drupal 8 and integrate that with Fedora 4 uh, and possibly Fedora 3 as well. But paying attention to that basic theory that um, or practice that it should be easy to migrate your data from one uh, version to another. As I mentioned the community is growing. Uh, lots of um, adoption in uh, North America, Europe, and Eastern Europe, uh, sites in Australia, New Zealand, uh, South America, uh, Asia. We don't have all of the sites on the map here because uh, not all are public. Um, so a very, very robust community, lots of uh, training opportunities, and um, if you are on the island or list, um, it's a very active list. I mentioned the camp, so I won't go into those in detail other than to say um, if it's something that people are interested in, there is a camp next month in London, England, May 7 to 9. Uh, there's an upcoming camp in Toronto in August, uh, Denver, Colorado in the U.S. in October, and then possibly one in Boston in December. So as I mentioned earlier, we'd be quite happy to consider uh, sending our team uh, elsewhere to um, provide uh, hands-on training with the system. There are also other opportunities. Uh, a, an important part of our approach with Islandora has been to encourage a diverse ecosystem. So Discovery Garden is a spin-off from the University of PEI and it is a commercial uh, service that provides any manner of support, uh, system audits, consulting, hosting, uh, Islandora On Demand is a cloud-based system that Discovery Garden has created which allows organizations to basically log into a website and um, not have to have any local infrastructure. Uh, so Discovery Garden is an example. Lyricist is a nonprofit member organization in the United States, is offering um, Islandora members. Uh, Lyricist has over 1,800 members. So it's becoming a very uh, important emerging opportunity for people. Um, we also recognize that uh, consortial in, uh, installations of Islandora are increasingly attractive. We have over half a dozen consortia like Metro in New York City, Colorado Alliance, the Florida Virtual Campus, um, Council of Atlantic University Libraries. Um, so we recognize that having a single implementation of Islandora where each member can have its completely own and different functionality and branding is an extremely attractive option uh, and a very cost-effective opportunity. Uh, so you can of course do that in your own consortial uh, infrastructure and uh, you can also get a consortial version of the uh, cloud-based 
Islandora on demand. So many a number of options there. Islandora is, uh, uses best practice open source development. Uh, our open source community is extremely engaged. Uh, here's just a few examples of recent contributions, um, including entire service packs and individual modules. Um, I would say the adoption of Islandora is in the dozen or more per month range. Uh, these days, uh, I it's not hardly a day goes by where I don't hear about a new uh, site implementing the system. The foundation was created to oversee um, the uh, community and the code and the activities around the code. So it's a nonprofit, member-driven organization that was created in July, last July, and it again represents the desire to have a diverse ecosystem. Um, and you can get information about the Foundation's membership uh, on the Islandora website. Just a couple of mentions of Islandora in the agricultural context. Um, this is a slide from our colleagues. I think actually Giancarlo uh, Borelli may be on the, on the call. Um, this is a, um, a copy of a, uh, a, a page from a, a presentation that was recently made at a conference. Uh, in Europe, and this reflects the very exciting uh, developments in their V2 P2 project, uh, Saris and their and their uh, colleagues in creating a diverse repository which uses the FAO uh, Agricultural Ontology Service to link various types of assets, whether they're digital books or historic slides of um, of infected plants and so it's an extremely um, exciting development in uh, the island or community where uh, ontological semantic uh, relationships and thesaural linkages are made possible within the island or framework to support uh, complex agricultural content. Uh, example of use cases in Agriculture, the USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, uses Islandora um, as a uh, an administrative, I guess, in a sense, a component in their local uh, services around the agricola system. Um, I just mentioned the CNR Cirrus project, which is building a, a repository of content about plant microorganism virus interactions. UPEI has a bio uh, wet lab, as we call it, data management system, which is designed to store information about uh, pharmaceutical or nutraceutical research. Um, we have a chemistry solution pack, which stores information about chemicals, uh, molecule files, and goes out on the internet and automatically grabs uh, information about those. We've also recently integrated in the Taverna system. Taverna is the uh, science workflow system that allows you to create uh, complex workflows that transform data uh, from one uh, use format to another. And again, lots of tools. Um, the file storage, the last two on this slide, the file storage solution pack and the compound solution pack together those two applications would allow you to store any type of data any type of binary digital file and take um, individual files that you've uploaded and relate them using the compound solution pack to create what I would call uh, aggregations of, of uh, data in the repository so using those two as an example, you could create collections of data or digital assets um, very quickly and in a very uh, accessible way so that they become uh, searchable and uh, people can download the, the content. So those two tools as an example give you the ultimate flexibility in creating a repository of any type of data. Um, so with that as um, the final bit, and I realize that's a fairly 
rapid run through 